Winner of over 70 international titles, including the U.S. Open and the 1999 World Nine Ball Championship. Considered by many to be the greatest pool player of all time, he is the living legend, Efren Butterreyes. CPBA Premiere. Welcome to our very first episode of CPBA Premiere. My name is Ted Lerner and I'll be your host today. Well, for our first episode, it really doesn't get much better than this. Our guest today is a winner of over 70 international titles in a career spanning 40 illustrious years. He is a two-time world champion, winner of the 1999 World Nine Ball Championship, 2004 World Eight Ball Championship, 1994 US Open Championship. He is a six-time Derby City Classic One Pocket Champion. Five times he won the Derby City Classic Master of the Table. Two-time World Cup of Pool winner with his partner, Francisco Django Bustamante and he has also won two times on the International Pool Tour in the mid-2000s where he won over three quarters of a million dollars. He is a legend around the world and many consider him to be perhaps the greatest man to ever play the sport of pool. Of course, he is an idol and a national treasure here in the Philippines and to Filipinos residing all over the world. I'm talking about none other than the legend Efren Bata Reyes. I'm very pleased to be joined by the living legend, an idol to 110 million Filipinos here in the Philippines and all those Filipinos around the world. None other than Efren Bata Reyes. Welcome, Efren. Efren. All right, great. Uh, it's so much fun to talk to you. I'm really, it's a real honor. Uh, I've known you for uh, 25 years and uh, it's just, uh, you, you've had such an amazing career. And every, ever since I've known you, you've been a, an extremely busy person. You're every day, you're, you, even if you don't have a tournament, you're going to uh, a money game, you have uh, a card game, you're playing chess. Uh, you, you've always got something that you're doing with your mind and some game and sport that you have to do, always busy. And now comes the pandemic. So what have you been up to during the pandemic? How did this affect your life? Alam mo, dito, simula ng pandemic, kahit last year pa yan, bago nagsimula ang pandemic, nasa Amerika muna ako, naglaro ako ng competition, mga tournament. At ang ego man nag-pandemic, umuwi kagad ako dahil baka magtagal ako rin, hindi ako makauwi. So dito naman, ang ginagawa ko naman dito, kumo bawal-bawal din yung mga maglalaro, puro sarado bilyara. Kahit pa paano, naglagay din ako naman sa, sa, sa bahay namin para mag Lalo na ngayon, mga nagtitraining ako, wala rin bilyara, tinanggal. So hindi ko rin may training yung mga kapwa ko player. Ang inihintay ko na lang, invited na lang ako para sa paglalaro ko ng bilyara kung saan-saan. Yung merong naging bait sa akin, binabayaran ako, doon ako pupunta. Pero kasi pagdating dito sa pustahan, hindi masyado ngayon dahil hindi pa maganda yun. Dahil maraming nanonood sa akin, puro kailangan niya may social distance. So, wala. Pag wala akong ginagawa naman, magchechess na lang ako. E bara, bawal din. Pero kahit pa paano may magawa rin, kahit na konti-konti, pwede rin maglaro. 
So I saw recently that you played pool and chess against Manny Pacquiao. Can you tell us about that and how did you do? Uh, you know, you know the, cap the captain ng barangay doon, in-invite ako. Noong kaibigan namin player din, you know Marlon Manalo. Marlon Manalo, yeah. yeah. Siya nag-invite sa akin. Pinapupunta niya ako doon para uh, ewan ko kung anong meron sila doon. Kaya lang, nung bandang uli, nasabi pupunta daw si Manny. Kung pupunta daw si Manny, gusto nandoon doon ka rin. Kasi gusto daw maglaro ng billiard ni Manny at saka ng chess. Kaya nagpunta ako doon, naglaro kami ng pool at naglaro din kami ng chess. Sa pool, may talo ako dahil kinakabahan ako. Pero sa chess, kahit matalo ako, wala akong kaba. Kaya wala siyang panalo sa akin doon. <laughs> You're nervous playing pool against Manny Pacquiao? I'm ashamed if I lose. That's why I get nervous. <laughs> He's a good player, though. Yeah. He's been playing uh, pool a long time ago. Even if he's not a boxer, he's still playing pool yeah. before. Yeah, he, he now he's a boxer now. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of your life. Uh, you were born in Mexico, Pampanga. Uh, you're the middle child of, uh, there's nine children, right? Nine children, and your father was a barber. And uh, what do you, re what is your, Biggest memory? What are the? What do you remember from that time of your life, your early years, uh, growing up, first few years in uh, Pampanga? Alam mo yung mga nandito sa Pampanga ako, Mexico ako nakatira. Ngayon, wala akong alam gawin noon. Sinama lang ako ng tatay ko sa Manila para doon kami tumira. Kaso, ang natuluyan ko bilyaran, Lucky 13. So, ang nangyari sa akin doon, Lagi ako nanonood ng mga naglalaro, kaya eh, natuto ako sa mga naglalaro ng hindi marunong. E, tapos nakikita ko na merong mga nananalo, binibigyan sila ng pera. So naglaro din ako para bigyan din ng pera pag nanalo ako. Kaya natuto rin ako. At simula doon, marami ng tao nakakita sa akin na bata pa lang ako, magaling na ako. Kaya, Marami na, hindi pa, nag-aaral pa ako, masiguro mga grade 2 ko, dinadayo na ako. Kasi nung grade 1 pa lang ako, 9 years old pa lang ako, marunong na ako. Kaya nagdadayo na, at doon na ako nakilala. Yeah. No, but why did your parents send you there first in the first place at 5 years old? Why? Because why? ang chewing ko, doon nakatira sa bilyaran. Doon kami nakatira, doon muna kami tinira. Tatay ko nagtatrabaho ng barbero, pagkatapos doon kami tutuloy sa bilyaran. Doon kami nakatira, bilyaran ng uncle ko yun. Now, uh, people might not realize, but Evanita, the Lucky 13 back then, right? It was a really, um, I, I understand that like movie stars went there to the Lucky 13, Evanita. What kind of people do you remember went to the Lucky 13? Marami na nangyari, Lucky 13. Siguro, ang Lucky 13 na yun, mga artista nagpupunta doon. Kasi yung kabilang building, doon nandun yung mga, yung Garza building, nandun lahat nag yung mga artista. Mga stuntman, mga kontrabida, nag para magandang pelikula. Eh, katabi lang yun, sa, sa akin sila, Lucky 13. Nandun sila Chiquito, nandun si Dindo Fernando. Pupunta rin. Maraming mga artista pupunta rin. Naglalaro rin. Karamihan, mga kontrabida. Kaya nakilala ngayon, ang action game, Lucky 13, action game, second floor. The, the, third, the third floor, nothing, only, ano lang, laruan lang yun, walang pistahan doon. So, doon ako sa taas, bawal ako dito sa second floor. What did you like about the Lucky 13, and what did you like about pool when you first saw the game? What was it that attracted you to? Wala ako mapuntahan, takot akong bumaba. Kala ko nga sa bilyarang puro pesta kasi may mga ilaw. Alam mo sa barrio namin, kamukha doon sa Mexico, Colobasa, alas 6 pa lang patay na ilaw, wala nang ilaw. E doon sa Manila, Lucky 30 may ilaw parang pesta. Ang nagustuhan ko lang sa bilyar, kaya nagsimula ako doon, Doon ako pwedeng kumita ng pera dahil nakikita ko, nakikita ko sa kanila dahil kumikita sila pagka nananali sila. Kaya nag-interest na rin ako sa bilang kasi 
wala naman akong alam na sport kung hindi yun lang nakikita ko doon eh. Kahit basketball, Jack Marono. O lahat-lahat ng mga laro doon, billiard, eh pwede pa akong kumita. Bata pa lang ako, kumikita na. Is it really true that you slept on the pool table there at the yes. Lucky 13? Sa, sa gabi, doon ako matutulog siguro. Nagsasara ang bilyaran, mga 1 p.m. na. Wala na. Tapos doon ako matutulog sa ibabaw ng lamesa. Umaga, 11 o'clock, kailangan lilipat ako sa ilalim. Kasi may dumarating ng simula mga tao. Kaya hindi ako pwede sa taas ng lamesa kung di doon na ako sa ilalim noon. Tapos, pag, pagka na bawa, nagising ako, mag-insahe muna ako doon, lalaro muna ako ng mga bandang 11 bag, bago ako matulog ulit. Sa gabi naman, bago magsara, maglalaro din ako mag-isa. Pinapractice ko yung mga nakikita ko. So, all kinds of players came through there. There were good players, uh, average players. Not everybody. Some only, but, but, but a lot of uh, a good players, they come there to Manigan because the, uh, they got a lot of stakers over there. Like the, the, the actors, they have money to, to bet some, some, some guy. You know, there, there's a famous, I've heard you tell me before, um, you say, I said, well, how come you know so many good shots? And you said, well, because um, I learned the really, the basic shots uh, in pool, potting a ball, uh, English, um, putting backspin on the ball from the good players. But you learn the impossible shots from the bad players because the bad players just sometimes, they just hit the ball anyway and they make impossible shots, you know, when they're playing because they don't think because they're bad players. But you said you watched the bad players. I'm thinking, at the Lucky 13, is that where you studied all the players? You studied the good players and the bad players? For the good players, sa mga magagaling, wala ako makikita sa kanila. Nang galing. Nanunod ako, pa ultimo, karambola, nanunod ako. Napanood ko, chikito. Ang laro ng chikito sa karambola, magpatras. Ginaya ko yung atras niya. Mga epektos niya, mga patras niya, ginaya ko. Sa mga iba naman, hindi marunong. Nakikita ko, hindi naman nila alam ang ginagawa nila eh. Naglalaro, hindi nila alam magkakaganon. Makikita ko yun. Tapos pagdating ng gabi, insayin ko yun. May malakas tumira. Yung malakas tumira, napapahina yung tira. Yung mahinang tumira, napapalakas ang tira. Ginagaya ko yun. Yung, so yung mga nakikita ko, Lahat ng tira, ginagaya ko, kaya yun ang tutunan ko. Sa mga magagali, ang matutunan mo, simple shot only. Simple lang. Yung mga pamamaraan. Pero yung mga magic, wala sila. Kung hindi yung, yung mga hindi marunong, ang merong magic. Kaya wala magagawa yung mga yon. Pag marunong ka na magpatras, magpasunod ng bola, at mag-epektos. Yung mga patras na bola at saka korida, epektos, natutunan ko yan. Kichikito. Pero hindi niya ako tinuturo, nanonood lang ako. Sa mga ibang tira na mala, sa packet na, makikita ko sa mga hindi marunong. Doon ko ko gagawin. Siyempre, alam ko namang gawin. Okay, so at what age did the, your uncle say, stop beating you for playing pool and say, hey, you can be good at this? Your uncle, did he, when did he accept that you're a pool player? Wala sila sinasabing ganyan. Sa mga, yung mga, mga uncle ko, wala sila sinasabi kung kailan ko i-stop to. Hindi nila alam kung magiging popular din to. Basta sila nagpapalaro lang doon. At gusto nila, nando doon din ako. Dahil pag nando na ako, dumadami rin ang tao nang gagaling sa ibang probinsya. Pag lumipat akong bilyaran, nagagalit sila kasi susunod din sa akin doon. Yun ang, yun ang ano. Pero yung pag-stop at saka yung paggaling, marunong ka na, wala sila sinasabi noon. So, okay, I heard that you had your first money game at nine years old. And uh, what was that feeling like when you started to win money playing pool? Eh, sa, siyempre, ganito. Alam mo, nine years old, yung umpisa pa lang. Nine years old, linaban ako doon sa taong lagi naglalaro doon. Yung nakakalaban ng chewing ko, Yun nga, pag nananalo yung chewing ko, binibigyan siya. 
Kaya gusto mo ang laro niyo. No? O naglaro kami. Tinalo ko rin yung taong yun. Nakaporsyento ko, no, 20 pesos. Ang laki ng talo niya, may gita siguro isang libo, pero 90 pesos lang yung binigay sa akin. So, binigay sa akin 90 pesos, binigay ko kagad sa tatay ko, pero hindi niya alam, doon galing. And a few years later, they're like, I think, 12, 13, 14 years old. You had some friends from the Lucky 13 who take you around to the different provinces, maybe here in Luzon, to gamble for money matches, right? And they, you are the player, they are the stake horse. Uh, what was that all about? What was that like back then? <coughs> Kasi, nung nalaman nila magaling ako, estudyante ko, maraming na nakakaalam na marunong ako. Kaya pinupuntaan ako doon, hindi ko sila kilala. Kukunin lang ako para ilaban ako sa ibang lugar. Ang gagawin nila, mga aharang lang kami. Hindi, wala akong kalaban na magagaling, puro hindi marunong ang kalaban ko. Dahil alam nila na pwede kong talunin yung mga, yung mga magagaling, kaya ko rin talunin, pero papano kami makakarang kung lalabanan ko kagad yun. Kaya, nung bata pa ako, iniikot na namin yung mga probinsya, mga kahit na buki dyan, pinapasok namin. Yung mga kaibigan ko dati, wala, na, wala naman yung para magsama sa akin lang. Was it dangerous sometimes no. to play and go to these towns and beat the, these guys for all their money? No, 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 no not, nothing. Walang nagalit sa akin sa lahat ng mga dayo ko sa mga ibabang probinsya, kahit na magulong lugar, may mga tinatawag pa mga monkeys, mga magugulong, mga hukbo, sinasabi. Wala, wala nagagalit sa akin. Mga kakampi ko pa nga yung mga yun eh. <laughs> eh, di naman, daw, di naman ako kumikibo eh. Paano nagagalit lang yung mga yan pag ikaw napakayabang mo? Talk about the um, American base here, Clark, Clark Base in Pampanga. Um, did you get a lot of money off of the American guys playing pool? Nothing. Walang pera nung panahon noon. They had a lot of money? Merong pera. A lot of money, maraming pera. Yeah. Ang mga American, maraming pera. Kaya lang dito sa atin, mura pa pera. <laughs> ang dollar natin, time steam pa lang dati yan. At saka ang mga nagmamanager sa akin, dadali nga ako doon, mananalo, hindi na ako man ako magkakaroon malaki, konti lang bibigay sa akin. Eh, hindi ko man alam ang mga porsyento ang dati. Kaya American, gusto nga. Tapos nga, meron pang American na gusto pa akong dali sa Amerika eh. Tata doon ako natatakot. But just, just to clarify, there was a lot of pool tables in Angeles City at the time because of the base. Uh, pool was very popular and these American soldiers or, you know, GIs, they have dollars uh, and they want to spend it and they like to drink. Yes. Perfect for taking their money, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure you must have taken some American money. Not, not me because I am not using my money. Oh, but you, yeah. you beat them. But your, uh, your stakeholder. The stakeholders making money, oh, not you. me. Yeah. But at this point, uh, you're 85, so you were uh, almost about 29, 29 years old, right? When did you know that you were first one of the, be the maybe the best player in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. I heard you say before that at 13, 14 years old, you already know you're the best player in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And that at 20 years old, even though you've never been overseas, you are already the best player in the world. How do you know that you are the best first? Talk about best player in the Philippines. Nakita ko, na, nakita ko na lahat sila. Lahat ng magagaling, nung pagbalik ko, nagaling, o yung una pa lang, yung register pa lang, nakita ko. Pagpunta namin doon sa Registon, Registon, yun ang first tournament na hindi namin alam yun eh, na meron palang tournament. So, duma, ang 128 players, lahat yan. Kami lahat. Here. No, in, in US. Yeah. 128 players uh, uh, ang mga maglalaro. Ngayon, nandun ako sa taas, manunood ako ngayon. Lahat ng player, pupunta doon mag-iisayo. Lalabas nila yung bola. Tapos, ubusin nila. Lahat sila umuubos ng bola. 
Lahat ng bawat dating lagi lang umuubos ng bola. Pero merong minsan na yung bola hindi sumabog. Linabas nila hindi sumabog. Nahirapan sila doon. Tapos mag, doon, doon sa nahirapan sila doon, lamang na ako. Nakita, nakita ko na eh. Lamang ako. Okay. Sa mga hindi binibreak, nakikita ko marami magagaling. Konti lang ang break. Hindi sabog. Plisingan. Pahirapan. Nakita ko rin sila maglaro. Malayo. Hindi rin sila pwede. Magaling lang sila ubusan ng bola. Kaya alam ko, lamang ako sa kanila. Dahil ako, meron ako nito. Ginagamit ko yung laro ko, magaling. Eh, kung mahirap, papalang titirahin. Bibigyan ko ng, siyempre, yung protection para hindi sila makatira. Yun ang wala sila. Kaya lang, siyempre, kinatagalan, nakikita nila, natuto sila. Alam na rin nila. Kaya magaling na rin sila. Lahat ng makikita nila, pagka kinuha nila, magagawa din naman nila eh. Noong una, hindi nila alam. This was the time we call now the Filipino invasion, right, in the U.S. Who were the names? Let's give me the names. Who is it? It's you. Who else? The Filipino invasion. Jose Pariga. Francisco Django Bustamante. O on, only three players they got name over there, but... What's that, sir? Rodolfo Luwatch coming, oh. but uh, is different for uh, top ranking. But he's a good player, too. But mm -hmm. a lot of uh, a pool player, too, in the United States, more better than Luwatch. So why... When you see all the American players, because that is the... That is the home... Back then, that's the home of pool. The U.S. is the top pool playing country. What is it that makes Filipinos, why are Filipino players like yourself and, and Parika and Bustamante so good compared to the players, but other players from other countries? Si Parika dati, talagang magaling din yung praktisyado dito sa Pilipinas. Alam mo kasi, mga laro dito, puro may dayo, dayo dito, kung kanina-kanina lalaban, napapraktis sila sa pagbibigay ng partida sa mga tao mga player dahil wala man sila ipapanalong parehas eh. Kaya nababatak sila, gumagaling sila. Kaya pagdating niyang Amerika, sanay na sila sa gustaan yung mga takot nila, wala. At alam nila, kahit magaling, pwede rin nilang talunin. Kaya baliwala sa kanila kahit sino ang kalaban nila. I mean, I mean it's, I've always seen, I mean, I've talked to you many times, you, you often say it's about the money games because Filipinos play money, <laughs> play money games. Uh, every day yeah. for 15 hours a day and if you don't win you only get a little balato and that's it and maybe but the balato before nothing only only when they start the tournament they get balato <laughs> the sabers <laughs> you've always said the money get well, two things money games playing money games they're hungry makes them good at pressure mm. and also playing rotation 15 ball rotation because so there's the rotation, many balls on the table right the rotation is is more concentrate to other game because in rotation kailangan ubusin mo yung bola kung paano mo maubos kasi ang nine ball napakadali kahit sino kahit in panersera pwedeng maubos yung nine ball yung rotation din dati pagkalat pwede ring maubos pero maraming masikip na bola sa paglalaro rotation Kaya kailangan, ang concentrate mo puro pala isipan kung paano mo maubos. Kaya gumagaling yung mga tao dito dahil ang laro namin dito, puro rotation. But what makes, uh, there's money games in the U.S., there's money games in Europe, but what makes, uh, there's money games in the Philippines, what makes Filipinos so good at money games? Yeah, because uh, many times a lot of games here, they play rotation. Rotation, money games, they got to stay course. The pool player here in Philippines, they don't have too much money to play by his own money. So they got to stay course back there. You always play money game, looking for always money game, rotation. So keep playing, even you're not a good, you're going to become a good because you're always playing pool. In the United States, they play money game, nine ball, very easy. Sometimes too many pressure for that. Once you miss, 
get pressure because you, you might do shoot again. In rotation, cannot pressure because it's very hard to finish all the ball. Mm. So at this time, now you're, in, you're going to the U.S., coming back and everything, you also became very good at other uh, disciplines. You, were, you became, you're great at nine ball, 10 ball, rotation, one pocket, eight ball, you're, you were unbeatable at the time, even three cushion billiards. Why are you so okay. good at all of these? How did you get so good at the all first, of these? Uh, the first eight ball. I learned the eight ball from the Americans too. Because you know, in club, they, they play only eight only ball. Eight ball. <laughs> so I thought how to play, how, how to use the playing eight ball. So I learned the eight ball from, from it, and I know how to run out too. That's why it's very, and I know how to put the cue ball. I know the exactly uh, simple shot for, for playing eight ball. So I learned from eight ball. In one pocket, that's why I learned one pocket. I don't know one pocket. Because when I was there, they don't like to play me nine ball anymore. They like to play me, they ask me to play one packet. So, how can I play one packet? Paano ako maglalaro ng one packet? Hindi ko alam ito. Sabi niyo, eh, wala, eh, yun ang pwede namin laro siyo. Nine ball, laka may panalo. So, ginawa ko, nag-practice ako ng, I'm practicing one packet with the uh, Freddy, the beer. Freddy the beer. In Chicago. So after I finish uh, uh, practicing with him from pocket, go back to Philippines, and I start playing by myself. Uh, my opening is myself, playing one pocket, safety, safety, safety. Come back to America, I'm ready now to play one pocket to everybody. Because I know how to safety, I know, I know how to move, I know how to run out. I'm a, a better shot before. That's why very easy to learn. In snooker, we start playing snooker 1987. So uh, I play in snooker, English billiard. Uh, three cushion? No, no, not yet three cushion. Uh, the three cushion first, not, not three cushion, you, nothing good, in, no money in three cushion okay. before. So we were playing back line. In Lucky 13, from 1976, nobody, nobody played me. A, a pull, rotation, like that. Everybody, no, nothing, no action. They like to play me carom. So I learned carom. I, I stopped playing pool, 76, come back to 1981. Five years you didn't play pool? Only, only carom. Well, because nobody played me in, in ano? In a pool. Even with handicap? No, no I, you know, before, I give handicap, they, they go 21 points. They get only 21, 21 points. So, so, and then, nobody now, even uh, anything handicap, nobody. So play Karum. I learn Karum. After that, from 1981, no, no more. They have a tournament in Karum. I'm disqualified. They don't, they don't, nobody play carom before because I'm playing. So I'm coming back to pool. <laughs> okay, so then in 1994, you won the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. First, uh, I believe, foreigner to win the uh, U.S. Open yeah. uh, championship. But what was that experience like to win the uh, U.S. Open? Biggest tournament <coughs> in the world at the time. Well, I was thinking only, ang inisip ko lang yung manalo ko U.S. Open. Kasi, Ang dami ko nang linaro sa, sa Amerika. May marami na akong panalo, pero walang ebidensya, hindi na te-televise, hindi na babalita rito. Kung hindi nagbabalita, kung di sponsor ko na nanalo doon. Baliwala yun dahil hindi nakikita. Kahit US Open, hindi rin naka-televise. Ano lang yung video lang yun eh. Yung mga sa US Open, well, hindi live video, parang online. Yan, ganyan pinanood doon. Yung panalo ko doon, hindi ko rin alam kung anong mangyari. Sikat ba ito? Hindi. Basta ang alam ko lang, manalo ko. Kasi hindi ko lang magiging sport yan. Nalaman ko lang yung magiging sport ito nung maglaro ko ng World Pool Championship sa Cardiff. Doon lang naging popular ang billiard at 
na, naging sport ang billiard. Pero nung panahon ng 1984, wala pa US Open, wala. Kahit panalo ako ng panalo, wala. Let's talk about that. 1999, you won the World Pool Championship. Uh, first event promoted by Barry Hearn yeah. in Matram. The sport of pool after uh, that in the Philippines just exploded in popularity. What was that like? Describe what it was like when you came back uh, to the Philippines and Nag as the world champion. Nagdala ako ng World Pool Championship. Kinakaban ako dahil ang dinadala ko ang bansa ng Pilipinas. Naglalaro ko doon dahil maraming din ng mga World Pool Championship dahil maganda rin itong world na to sa buong mundo to eh. Gusto kong manalo rito para maalam mo pa paano mangyayari dito kasi bago ako maglaro ng World Pool Championship, <coughs> naglaro muna kami ni Django dito sa Labang. Eh maraming tao na punong-puno yung ano. Ba, sumisikat na yata itong bilyar Kaya kasi marami ng tao, punong-puno yung bilyar doon. Naglaro ako ng Cardiff. Kailangan manalo rin ako. Pero hindi ko alam magiging sport yan. Kasi no, nung ang dami ko nang pinanalo nga, kung saan-saan ako naglaro, hindi sumikat din yung bilyar. Kasi dito sa atin, no, baliwala bilyar dati. Mga puro kanto-kanto lang mga naglalaro. Pero nung manalo ko doon, pag ko, Marami sa lubong. Marami ding interview. Ay, nisalubungin ako, pati presidente, yung malubong din. Wala, naiyak na ako. <laughs> Siyempre, hindi ko alam magkakaganito. Ngayon lang, sa dami ng pinuntahan ko, ang dami ko nang linaro, at alam na rin ng buong mundo. Ako na ang pinakamagaling sa buong mundo. Pero doon ko lang nalam, doon ko lang nakita. Kasi doon sa Cardiff din na yun, hindi dapat ako kasali doon. Disqualified din ako doon dahil wala ako dito sa, dito sa atin na pinadala sa Cardiff. Naging wild lang ako doon. Nagre-reklamo mga ibang bansa, mga ibang buong mundo, bakit hindi kasali ang pinakamagaling sa buong mundo? O kaya nasali ako doon. Binigyan ako ng wild. So now, you, uh, you, after the winning the World Pool Championship, you, you become so popular. You're already popular in Philippa, but so popular. Um, People, everywhere you go, people are crowding around you. Uh, you know, they want your auditing around you. Uh, you know, they want your autograph. They want a photograph with you. Uh, I've seen you at tournaments in, uh, in the Philippines where they follow you into the men's room. Um, it's just crazy. Describe the, what it's like to be an idol. Yung hindi ko rin alam eh. Marami sumusunod sa akin, marami nagpapakuha, marami nagpapautograph. Bakit ganito ito? Hindi naman ako artista. <laughs> Sabi nga, itong pool naman, hindi naman sikat dito. Pero mo, kung saan-saan sinusundan na ako ngayon, marami nagpapapil. Tingnan mo nga itong kamay ko, nagkabukol na nga yan dahil sa kaka-autograph. Yung mata ko, nasira na rin dahil sa kaka-picture. Eh, hindi, ko alam, hindi ko alam mangyayari yung mga ganyan. Kaya lang, siyempre, Kumuha nandiyan na, eh, obligado ka na, siyempre. Alam ka naman, oh, yun ko, nakakaya. Siyempre, obligado ka. Sumunod ka na sa kanan, dami. Maraming ang pumupunta dyan, napakalayo pa ng lugar para puntaan lang ako. Oblig, obligado na ako doon. Right, and so you, you, this led to, um, you often would talk about pressure. Mm. Like, when you play outside the Philippines, there's not so much pressure. But when you're playing in the Philippines, after you win the World Pool Championship for the next 20 years here now, there's so much pressure on you. Talk about that pressure. How, how much pressure sure. was there? Because when you lose, people always whisper, oh, he's, he's no good anymore, right? I mean, okay, paliwanan ko siya yung pressure. Wala pa yung card dip na yan, wala pa yung mga tournament na yan, wala akong pressure. Bakit ka mo? Ako naglalaro lang. Matalo man ako, baliwala sa akin. Kasi ang matatalo sa akin kung sino yung pumupista sa akin. Eh ako, di man ako namumista ng pera ko. Pag namumista ako, eh, ako siyempre, nenerbison ako. Kaya wala ako nervis yan. Kahit, kahit saan ako pumunta, wala ako nervis yan. Maliban na lang, pag naglaro ng tournament, sarili ko na ngayon. Pag natalo ako isang beses, talo na ako, doon ako nagkakapresyon. 
Eh, ibang laro na yun. Iba sa money game, money game, matalo ka, pwede ka pang umulit. Eh, sa tournament, pwede ka pa bang umulit. Hindi na pwede. Out na. Kaya lahat ng laban, sa Amerika, kung mga tournament, may pressure ako. Pero pagkapistahan doon, wala. Wala akong pressure sa kanila. Mas gusto ko, yung kahit magaling na magaling kalaban ko, hindi ako magkakapressure dahil kaya ko rin naman silang tarunin. Iba yung tournament. Tournament, isa lang. Isa, pwede rin sa nine ball, hindi ka tumira. Pwede ka nervisan doon. So, the Filipino people put the pressure on you because they expect you to always win, right? I remember that. There would be, like, if you lose, they say there's something wrong with you, right? You're, you're not they, supposed they to... They're scared. They're scared. Natatakot sila, hindi sila tumira dahil alam nilang napakagaling ko. Kahit na ako nung araw, bago ako lumaro ng bilyar, linamahan ako si Parika, may takot din ako. Dahil alam ko magaling siya. Doon ako may pressure, eh, natatakot ako sa kanya. Magaling siya, baka hindi ako tumira dahil sa sinasabi nilang pinakamagaling eh. Doon ako may takot, pero nang namakita ang walang tira, sa tagal na ang paglalaro ng kanya, mawala rin yung takot sa mga ganyan. Pero yung kamukha ng mga tournament nga, yung tournament na yan, eh, yung pressure mo hindi rin matatanggal eh. Kasi baka hindi ka rin tumira. Eh, maiksi lang yun, hindi kamukha ng mga managin, matagal yan. Maka. Okay, this whole time, uh, I think in the 90s, maybe early 2000s, I just want to get this... Uh, clear something up. Is it true that you were playing for many years with a $20 cue stick made in Pampanga? Hindi $20, ten dollars $10. Before 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 that, bago ako pumunta ng America, 1985. The cue stick is 1985. I don't have a cue. My cue is broke. Nasira na yung tako ko. Yung ginagamit ko nung panahon. You're Efren Reyes. Many people consider you at the time the greatest player to ever play. Why are you not playing with a Muchi or a, you know, a, a, another Southwest? Or why are you playing with a, a $10 cue stick from a local cue maker in Angeles City? Okay. Ang dati kong gumagamit din ako ng ng Adams before, galing lang Japan. Nasira na yun. Wala na ako magamit. Pumunta ako ng Amerika, dala ko yun. Ang takong yun, ang may-ari, Cesar Morales. Nung, nung Pilipin ko na yun, $10, ang may-ari, the owner, Cesar Morales. So, he, binigay niya sa akin yung tako para yun yung gamitin ko dahil Wala na akong ibang mga gamit na ako yung papuntang Amerika. So, simula nun, yun ang ginagamit kong tako. Ngayon naman, yung sinasabi mong maraming magagandang tako sa Amerika, yung mga music, yung mga tako doon, paano ako magagamit yung mga doon? E, obligado, bibili pa ako. E, baguhan lang ako doon, di man nila ako bibigyan ng tako. Hindi ko mabibili yung tako. Yung panahon nun, hindi ako makabili, wala man ako pera nung araw. Kaya yung tako ko ginagamit. Nagamahin ko na yung tako ko. Hindi, okay na to. Kung gagamitin ko yung tako na iba, hindi ko naman gamay, hindi matatalo ko. So, hindi ko pwedeng gamitin yun. Ito na lang tako ko. Okay. So, let's talk about some of the big victories that you had. You won $170,000 in Japan. Uh, that was the biggest prize. Not $170,000. $200,000. Uh, $200,000. Minus tax. Oh, minus tax. Okay. Then... The IPT, of course. You won two tournaments, right? Two hundred thousand against Siegel. Five hundred thousand. Man, you're when when you see that money. What 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 happens to your mind when and your heart well, when you see that money on? I, this this is now I'm making money too many before only ten ten thousand dollars only, make only ten thousand. When I come to U.S., all the tournament. It's the biggest tournament price is 10,000. So it's because I was always go there. Lagi ako pumupunta, tumataas ang tumataas ang premyo. Bawat tumataas ang premyo kahit anong tournament, ako nananalo. Sa akin lang punta ng mga tournament, ng mga premyo ng mga ano. Nagsimula din yung Tokyo Open, naggawa ng 200,000, ako rin nanalo. Nagsimula rin ang IPT. Oh, bago IPT. 
Ang World Pool Championship muna sa Cardiff, 50,000 dollars. Iyon na nagkaroon, 1999. Yun ang malaki muna. At sumunod doon yung Japan Tokyo Open, 200,000. Sumunod doon ang IPT, 200,000. Another IPT, 500,000. It's supposed to be another one for one million. But the, the, the producer and uh, the organizer, they go into jail. Yeah, right. <laughs> so no tournament. Yeah, but you, when, when you see that kind of money, obviously everyone gets excited, but not everybody can win because of the pressure. Why you? Why, why do you think that you're oh, man. Okay. When, you're able to win so many tournaments with big prize money? Play tournament, I was thinking to make money, okay? First, if you got a place already, like uh, 64 players or 32 players, I get price already. So whatever, I get price already, shoot, we've been at least I get money already. Oh. So I'm not, the, the price is no more in my mind, only in the beginning. Nung pisa pa lang kasi ba, baka hindi ako makakong premyo, sayang yung lakad ko. Eh, ito, nag, meron akong mapipremyo kahit matalo ko, wala na isipan yun. Tuloy-tuloy na yun. Yeah, I saw against Rodney Morris, you don't even look nervous. No, nothing. You're shooting for $500,000 on the eight ball and you don't even, you're like mm -hmm. relaxed. Yeah, yeah, because it's nothing in my mind. Wala na sisipan ko yun. Basta isipin ko, at saka ang kalabang ko, lamang na lamang naman ako rito, hindi ma mahirapan sa akin to, ay kahit na anong pa eh, mahirapan sa akin to, ngayon pa. Okay, uh, you won two World Cup of Pools, the doubles event that, from Matro. I got pressure. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but with your partner was Francisco yeah. Django Bustamante. Talk about your um, relationship with Django. Magandang pagkakasama namin ni Parang Django. Lagi naman kami magkasama dyan. Team kami, bata kami ni Boss Puyat. So kahit siya magpunta, kasama ko siya. Hindi kami magkalabang. Kahit siya... At pag kami tournament, may mga usapan na kami na savers. Kung hindi kami 10%, hati na kami. Kaya doon sa, sa IP team, 500, hati kami ron eh. Yung mga... Tsaka yung mga, alamabawa, sanggana. Hindi ako natatakot sa mga kalabo ko, natatakot ako sa mga kasangga ko. Okay. Um, who, over the years of playing in the U.S. and all over the world, uh, who are your biggest adversaries? The ones who, who've given you the most trouble over the years on the pool table? Who are the <coughs> toughest from, players? From the U.S. Or? And anywhere. Who's the toughest? Give me some names. Toughest players. My toughest uh, player, when I come to the U.S., I know it's Mike Seager. Mike Seager. But Mike Seager, he quit uh, 1995. So and the, uh, the next one is uh, Ernest Strickland for that, because no more Mike Seager. Because Strickland is more a uh, nine-ball player. He, he got very strong hand. But uh, Mike Seager is very strong here. And he got a good tutor, you know how to move the cue ball. Uh, and sometimes yeah, he's scared, but, I, but the pressure for him looked like nothing. But I saw the game when he played because I saw my game to, to his. So sometimes you're scared playing Mike Siegel. Yeah, because nakikita ko yung tira ko, nakikita ko rin sa kanya. Yung mga iba magagaling lang, boom break, at saka mga shooting, packeting. Pero hindi ginagamit ito. Sa kanya, ginaga ang gumagamit na nito, si Mike Siegel, si Nick Parner, si Ali Napkins, ang mga gumagamit niyan nang merong ganito. Eh, yung mga iba, puro shooting, magagaling. Eh, kung tutusin, magagaling sila sa akin sa shooting. Yung mga yun eh. Kaya lang, siyempre, in, in the long run, lamang pa rin ako dahil mas lamang ako dito eh. Uh, uh, what are some of your greatest memories uh, in tournaments over your career? Yeah, give me like two or three. you have any? The first one, color of money. 
So okay, that's when you Strickland. you played Strickland in a race to was a hundred hundred and twenty one hundred twenty, and it was in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and that was the money. The promoter was um, Bob Bob Moore. Bob Moore. That's yeah, it. and then after that, the, you won. You won that. Yeah, yeah. The, after that, the World Pool Championship. That's that's the second, but the first one is more the beginning when I played Mike Seeger in Baltimore. Uh, in, in, I know Baltimore, uh, in LA, we play in, in LA. Yeah. That's 1987. That's one of your big, biggest memories. Yeah, biggest memory when I play, because it plays so good, I play so good over there. But uh, for, uh, for pool, um, I'm more in, uh, in uh, 1999 World Pool Championship. Okay, so uh, you have, in the last few years before the pandemic, you've kind of gone on a retirement tour. No retirement. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? That you're not in, you're not in competitive pool tournaments anymore, or but you do go to play one pocket. So what does that mean? Like a re, like the Efren Reyes retirement or farewell tour that you did oh. in Germany. Look, Tell us what your what do you what are your plans here? Like, invite ako sa Germany, kasama ko si Parin Django sa Germany para mag-exhibition sa mga iba't ibang lugar doon. Pero, hindi ko alam na gagawin nilang farewell yun. Wala man ako sinabing mag -re retire ako. mag -re retire ako pag hindi nakain ang kamay ko. Yun ang sinabi ko doon. Pag nanginginig na yung kamay ko, mag -re retire ako. Pero habang hindi, tutuloy ko pa yan. O maaaring naman mag -re retire ako sa tournament, pero sa money game, hindi pa. Totoo ka. Yung sinasabing farewell doon, sila naglagay doon. Yung kusino yung naging bite sa akin doon. O yun ang nagka-pero doon. But you do get invited a lot, don't yeah. you? A lot, all over the world. They pay your plane ticket and it's exhibitions, right? Oh, right na, yeah. Marami na nga, lalo na sa Amerika. Simula nung 2017, to uh, 2017, 2000 ba yun? 2017, doon nagsimula, marami na ako exhibition. Doon sa Amerika, puro ano na lang yan, exhibition, no, no more tournament. Yung mga laro ko dyan, nagbabayad sila, bayad ang ticket ko, bayad ang hotel ko, babayaran ako doon mga $2,000, $2,500. Bawat punta ko isang lugar. Marami ako napupuntahan, kaya lang, hindi ako pwede magtagal. Hindi ko rin kahit saka, ang pinakamatagal ko doon, two months lang. Pagdating ng two months, kaya, kailangan umuwi ako kahit wala pa yung pandemic. Okay, but I, I know, you, like you said, you went to Germany, uh, maybe, did, did you go to Brunei or have you been, uh, I mean, you've been all over Asia with invitations and everything. I guess it's easy money, right? Tournaments are difficult money because pool, the tournament prize monies are so low, it's so, low. It's so difficult to yeah. win money. Yeah. So why, pay, why play tournaments when you can just go to exhibitions, right? You get a lot of exhibitions. Oh, kasi sa tournament, lalaban pa ako. Kailangan talunin ko pa sila, parami na pa naman magagaling yan para magkaroon ako ng prizes. I exhibition eh, maglalaro na ako, bayad na ako para na ako nanalo ng tournament. Maglalaro pa rin ako ng mga tournament daw, kaya lang pipili ko kung mga ilan ang pipiliin ko. Kung kamo sa Germany, kaya lang na pupunta daw, misan kasama ko pa si Parin Django para maglaro ng exhibition doon. Pero ay, hindi ko naman gusto talaga masyado rin sa Germany dahil maliit ang mga bayad doon eh. Ano na lang yun? Pilitan na lang doon. Mas maganda. Parating nga ako sa Japan, nag-exhibition challenge man, at saka sa Amerika. Ang punta ko sa Amerika, exhibition, tapos pili ako ng mga tournament. May mga tournament ako naka-schedule doon. Tournament, bakante, exhibition, tournament, tapos exhibition, uwi na. Yun. Are, are there money games in the U.S. for you? Uh, or no? It's, it's hard very, to find. It's very hard for me to play money games now because a lot of good players. Nobody weak players can play me now. They like uh, each game, very, very smart man.
play, play me over there. Yeah, okay, but you, so what, what is your plans, um, let's say in 2022 uh, in the future here? Will you go to the US play one pocket? Will you go to the Derby City next year? Uh, I tried, I thought ko pa kung pupunta akong Derby Classic ngayon. Itong next year, kaya lang, baka hindi ako makapunta ng Derby Classic kasi meron si Games sa Vietnam. Kaya baka next year, baka hindi ako makapunta ng Amerika. Pagkatapos siguro ng mga ng mga SEA Games ko, baka pwede yung invite nila mga exhibition ng kamo kamo ay kamo ka sa switcher na invite ako o baka pumunta rin ako ng Amerika uli. Mag magana pa ako siyempre tournament din habang naghihintay ako ng tournament, ano din na exhibition. So the tournaments you like, it seems like one pocket is where you you want to play one pocket. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure you would say nine ball, ten ball, anybody can win, right? You have you you don't have a big chance of winning. Tell us right now, all the people watching, one pocket. Who's still the who's the best player right now in the world? One pocket. Is it you? No, not, not me. Not now. <laughs> no. Not now. A lot of uh, good players now can beat me in one pocket. There's I know before uh, before. I know it's Alex Pagulan is the best uh, one pocket player now in uh, America. But sometimes they, a lot of uh, people, they beat uh, Alex Pagulan. We don't know who always playing one pocket and who is the young player for one pocket is the number one. Well, I don't know who's the young player. I think you're just being humble. <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're just... No, not me. You don't want to brag. Because, uh, you know, I'm too old, I cannot handle now the cue ball. Before I know how to put the cue ball in being one, pa one pocket, the move is very good for me. Shooting is very good. Now my shooting is no good. My move is still in my mind, but I cannot handle the cue ball. Don't work. So a lot of uh, top players in, in America or Filipino, they can beat me now. But before, I can say I'm the best in you know, you know, one pocket player, but now a lot. Speaking of other... Yeah, yeah go ahead. if they get old, maybe I still be the best. <laughs> Speaking of other players, yeah. what Filipino players do you like in the younger, of the younger players mm -hmm. right now? Let's say the middle age and the younger ones. Give me some names that you like here in the Philippines of players. Maraming magagaling ngayon dito sa atin yun. Maraming nadadagdagan na pool player na magaling. Ang pinakamagaling ngayon dito sa... Dati, nakikita kong pinakamagaling ang pocketing. Ito si Dennis Orcullo. Kaya na, siyempre, nagkakaidad na yan. May bata ngayon, ang kalaban niya, si Carlo Biado. Si Carlo Biado, nakikita ko noon dati, na-improve, pati break, na-improve. May magaling mag-shooter sa kanya ngayon, si Anton Raga. Kaya lang itong Anton Raga, hindi pa siya masyadong kilala, hindi pa siya na-exposed dahil hindi pa siya masyadong dumadayo at hindi pa masyadong nakikita sa TV. Na tiyempo lang Carlo Biado na TV, nanalo ng US Open kaya nakilala siya. Pero kabalikatan niya ngayon dito sa Pilipinos, yung Anton Raga. Kung nandi dito si Dennis Urkullo lagi, maaaring silang tatlo ang magagaling Magaling lagi dito sa atin. Eh si Dennis lagi nasa Amerika. Hindi masyado rin sumasali ng tournament. Puro managing laro niya to. People say you have, you're the greatest player to ever play pool. You have the greatest mind in the history of the sport. This is what many people all over the world say. So take us inside the mind of Efren Reyes. Tell us, what does it take for future players for players, what do they need to know and to do to become like you? Maraming gagawin pa yan. Yung mga ganyan. Eh, ako sa bilyar, hindi nila siguro magagaya pagdating dito sa bilyar. Kasi marami na akong napagdanan. Marami na akong napuntuhan. Nakilala na ako ng buong mundo. Nagustuhan ako ng mga tao. Hindi ko alam sa galing ko, sa pagkatao ko. Na ganito. Ako, nagpunta ako dati, dumaday ako, dinadala ko rin itong bansa natin. Pilipinas, may bandera. Lagi. Sila, wala. 
Naglalaro sila. Siyempre, yung kanilang proteksyon, ang isa kanilang paglalaro, walang iba. Well, eh, ako meron. Tapos, sa pag-ugali siguro, sinabing ganun, eh sila merong, may kala mo napakagaling na. Eh hindi pa. I- iba yung sinasabi lang napakagaling na. Eh ako hindi ko naman sinasabi yun. Kaya siguro, mas gusto ako kaysa doon sa mga ibang tao na magagaling din dito. Kaya mas ako nakilala. Ngayon, kung gusto nilang maging gano'n, katulad ko, siguro, gayahin nila ako. <laughs> okay, last thing. You've won 70, over 70 international titles. You, you've won two world championships, nine ball and eight ball. You've, like, the greatest, people say you're the greatest player uh, of all time. When you were just a youngster at the Lucky 13, did you ever imagine this life? No. Wala akong iniisip na ganyan, na magkakaganon. Wala akong iniisip na darating ako sa ganon. Basta ang alam ko doon, naglalaro lang ako, maghanap buhay, maglaro ng bilyar pag nanalo, magkaroon ako. Hindi ko alam kamukha ng bilyar kung magiging popular o makikilala ako dahil nung araw, bawal ang bata, tsaka hindi nintindi ang bilyar, lahat binabawal ang mga paglalaro. Kaya lang naman ito nakilala itong bilyar. Nung maging sport na yun, pagkatapos ng Cardiff, doon pa lang. La- tapos, laging maraming tournament dito at natetelebase lagi. Doon lang. Pero maliban doon, wa- ano na, eh, tsaka yung mga darating na ganyan, paano ako magiging world champion? Hindi ko inisip kung world champion ako hindi nung araw. Eh, hindi ko naman alam, wala naman tournament nung araw. Hindi puro dayo lang, mga harang lang. Are you, because pool is, uh, and all the billiard disciplines are very, you know, uh, mind and strategic uh, games, uh, is, is there something, that, do you, are you good at math? Or you, do, you, do you see the Tama, lines, you do you see the lines uh, on the table, or it's a feeling, or what, what do you see when you look at these impossible shots? Nakikita ko lang lahat dyan sa mga, sa mga tiran, kung saan pupunta, pati mga alimbawa, mag-i-effectus ka, mag, yung alimbawa, mag-spin ka. Alam ko na lahat ang mga darating dyan, para, para nga akong engineer eh. Alam ko na yan. Tsaka magaling din ako sa matematik kung, kung ilan na yung score ko, kahit uh, ano na nauhulo. Uh, what message do you have for younger uh, who either want to be great at pool or great at some other thing in life. <clears throat> Sa mga kapwa ko, mga atlet na katulad ko, siguro naman alam naman nilang kanilang gagawin. Kamukha ito. Kung anong gusto nyo, kung anong sport nyo. Kailangan maging malusog kayo, malakas, at saka yung mga bawal na gamot o bawal na kung ano man, kailangan huwag gagawin. Dahil Yung mga yon makakasira sa inyong katawan. Ang makakatulong sa inyo, yung palakas inyong katawan nyo, kailangan, mabu- kailangan maging maganda pa attitude nyo para makilala kayo. And one, and that, now last thing, because um, I remember when you won the $200,000, I said, I interviewed you then, and I said, Efren, you going to take a vacation and go to the beach? You said, beach? What am I going to the beach? What am I going to do there? Do you ever go on vacation? Wala akong hilig sa mga vacation, wala akong hilig sa mga pinupunta. Ang hilig ko lang yung maglaro. Kung ano gusto ko malaro ng basta mag-game. Kailangan ang lalaroin ko, merong utak talaga, merong iniisip. Hindi yung larong walang iniisip. So you always, you always have to have your mind yeah. doing something. You cannot, you cannot just sit down and... Nothing, wala. Ayoko, wala rin akong hilig sa pasyalan. Sabi ko nga, I- ipasyal mo ako doon sa may sugala ka ako. <laughs> doon magagamit ko yung utak ko. <laughs> okay, well, Efren Reyes, it has been a, an honor and a pleasure, and we'd like to thank you for coming here. It was a great interview. Really thank appreciate you. it. Well, that does it for our first episode. We'd like to thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next time for another exclusive episode only here on CPBA Premier.
CPBA Premier.